Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mr. Vosters. I'm a high school engineering teacher and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this hot water heater tube for a uh, coffee maker. So this is going to teach us a couple new features, mainly the uh, sweep tool which we're going to use to create this profile and we're also going to learn how to add threads in Onshape. So lots of exciting stuff so stay tuned and follow along as we create this. So I'm going to start off in Onshape. I've already created a folder for 2.2. So if you haven't done that, pause the video, create a folder for 2.2, and then we're going to create within that a document. We'll title that 2.2.5, and we'll just call it Hot Water Heater Tube. Click Create. And then from the uh, on shape environment, we're going to create a sketch on the front plane. I'm going to hide all of these planes so that I can kind of clean up my view. And then from here, I'm going to start creating some of our uh, profiles or our paths that we'll use to um, sweep this feature. So I'm going to do this line right here. So it's going to be 2.06 minus this 0.25 because we'll do this taper kind of separately. And then we're going to do this line down here. That's going to be 2.31. And then there's going to be a distance of 1.95 between them. So we said this one was going to be 2.06 minus 0.25. So we can just actually make Onshape do the math for us there. It comes out to 1.81. Next up, we're going to do our... Uh, bottom line that's going to be 2.31 this one doesn't have the tapered section but it does have some threads but we'll add those later so just leave it as the full 2.31 if you didn't do this while you're making your lines make sure your top line is constrained to your origin the reason we do that it's going to make our life easier when we go to make that revolve feature okay and then the last thing we need to do to get these in the right position is do a 1.95 dimension between them so that the spacing is all correct. And then to finish, we're going to make a three point arc. So click your top and bottom endpoints and then kind of drag this in position until you see that center of our circle snap vertically with the origin. So there it is vertical with the origin. Click your mouse and then we'll see that everything turned black here so hit escape to get out of the three point arc tool and now we can click our green check mark we've got the profile that we want now all we need to do is make a small circle at the end so that we can use that to kind of sweep along the path we've created for our tube so to do that we're going to make a new sketch we'll do that one on the right plane so you can see our sketch plane is here uh, now. So we'll go over to the right side of our view cube. And then we're just going to draw a circle on the origin. We're going to make that 0.37 for a diameter. And I'm getting that number from our sectioned view that's showing the cut through our tube. Click the green check. And then let's just go to an isometric. So I'll hold Shift 7. And then we can use our sweep feature. We haven't used this before, but it's pretty simple. The only thing you need to do right away is click on the face you want to sweep and then you just click on the different parts of your path that you want it to be swept across. From here just click the green check and we've got a really good start on our water heater tube. From here we're then going to create this tapered section. So one thing to note, the tapered section looks like it has a diameter of 0.3 at the end. So we can use that dimension to help us uh, sketch this out. So like I said, we wanted this original sketch to be kind of started at the origin so that now we can just use our top plane to draw the tapered um, end of our tube. So if I reorient to my top view, first thing I'm going to do is do the use project convert. And I'm just going to make it so that we can use this edge over here. And that's just the edge of our um, top of our tube. So from there, now I can start drawing some lines for that tapered section. 
So I do want it to be aligned with our midpoint because we're going to use the revolve feature to create the tapered section. So I'm going to start at the midpoint, drag this out. It's actually going to be 0.25. And then from there, I'm just going to go up 0.15 to give us that diameter of 0.3. And then from here, I'm getting a arc. So let's go back to the line tool. And we'll just connect our dots here. And then we'll finish by connecting the dots from the top to the midpoint. Click escape to kind of get out of your line tool and then click the green check to finish our sketch. Now we can see we've got this little profile here. We can revolve that to make our tapered section. Revolve axis is just going to be this inside um, edge here. Click the green check. And now you have your tapered section. We're almost done, actually. A couple things we need to do. Well, first, we're going to just make our shell. So click on both ends. It's going to default to a shell thickness of 0.1, which is going to be a little too thick for us. Um, the difference between our faces is 0.1. But you need to remember that that's divided between these two faces. So this is 0 0.05, this is 0 0.05, which makes that difference of 0.1. So from here, we need to change our shell thickness to 0 0.05. And that's going to look a lot more like our drawing here. Okay, so we've got almost everything done. The only thing we need to do is add our threads. Our threads look like they're a 3 eighths of an inch diameter, 16 threads per inch. These are coarse threads, class 3A. The only thing we really need to know about these threads, uh, at least as far as creating them in Onshape, is this 16. This is the number of threads per inch. So that's going to help us determine our pitch. Pitch is just the inverse of threads per inch. So you take one and divide it by this number. So 1 16th is our pitch. So keep that number in mind as we go forward here. There are a couple ways to create threads kind of manually in Onshape, but the easiest way and the way that we're going to do it in this video is called a thread creator feature. So you need to go over to this add custom features plus symbol and then click on public. There's actually some public feature uh, things that we can use that other people have created. So we're going to use the thread creator that someone else made. So type that in, thread creator, all one word, search, and then select this. I think it's the fifth one down. Looks like it's kind of got like a little circle here for the symbol. So click that and then click here where it says thread creator. It's going to pop up with a notification saying it was added to the toolbar from version start. So I can close out of this, and then if I click my drop down, now I have this option for thread creator. We'll just leave it as ANSI standard. We do have to click on the face we want to add threads to, and that was this one down here. So notice once I've clicked that, it does try to add some threads. We have to make a few adjustments because that does not look quite right yet. So we said our pitch was 1 divided by 16. So give that a minute. Adding threads can be a little bit uh, intense for your computer to process. So it's best to do this kind of last and to make sure that you've got everything saved beforehand. Onshape luckily kind of saves automatically for us. But if you're working in something like Fusion or Inventor in the future, just before you start adding threads to your models, just be aware that it can be uh, pretty intensive for like the graphics processor. Um, and then instead of having it fully threaded this whole section, we want it to just be half an inch. So if I go to fully threaded, click the drop down, I can select distance and now I can select 0 0.5, which will shorten that up a whole bunch. I'm going to taper this, just leave it at 45 degrees. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. So if we click the green check, now we have these nice fancy threads here. That will be good for our user. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, I will try to add this PDF, a link to this 
um, in the description for the video so that if you want to follow along, you can have this up next to you while you create this water heater tube. Okay, thanks for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe so that you get notified of any new videos.